Is it just my perception or do Colorado courts almost always interpret the state constitution in such a way as to favor higher taxes? That's certainly what happened on Friday. So last month, the legislature referred Proposition HH to the November ballot here in Colorado. The measure asked voters to give up their taxpayer refunds, so effectively a tax increase, in exchange for a slightly smaller property tax increase than we would otherwise see. The measure leaves taxpayers in a far worse situation than if we just did nothing at all. On Friday, a Denver district court okayed the measure by striking down a lawsuit that claimed it was unconstitutional. Shortly after the legislature referred Proposition HH to the ballot by passing Senate Bill 303, a lawsuit emerged arguing the measure violated the single subject and clear title requirements in the state constitution. From a plain reading of the text, this is obviously true. I explained why in my last video. I'm not going to rehash it here, but I will leave a link in the description if you want to go back and watch that video. I cautioned in my last video not to be surprised if the courts reject the lawsuit and rubber stamp the measure instead. That's exactly what they did, and I'm going to explain their rationale. First, Judge David Goldberg said he simply didn't have the jurisdiction to hear the case. He said that the courts must, quote, refrain from interfering with the ongoing legislative process except in extraordinary circumstances. Now, I'll leave it to the lawyers to argue about whether or not he really had jurisdiction, but he also ruled that even if he did have jurisdiction, he would rule against the lawsuit based on the merits of the plaintiff's arguments. The lawsuit pointed out that the measure contains at least four subjects in violation of the Constitution's requirement that bills contain only one subject. To that, Judge Goldberg said, quote, one could fairly argue that reducing taxes and shoring up the resulting financial shortfall are two separate separate subjects, but the court does not believe that they are so disconnected and incongruous as to be constitutionally impermissible. They are both part of the financial balance attempting to be adjusted by the legislation. In other words, that the measure would take away your taxpayer refund forever is just incidental. It's not a separate subject from property tax reform. Judge Goldberg also ruled that the measure did not violate the clear title clause in the state constitution. He said, quote, the title is not so vague or obscure as to force the reader to delve into the body of the proposed legislation to determine the general object, nor does interpretation of the title require any sort of superior intellect or rhetoric to divine the nature of the proposition. Here's what the title says. Concerning a reduction in property taxes and, in connection therewith, creating a limit on annual property tax increases for certain local governments, temporarily reducing the valuation for assessment of certain residential and non-residential property, creating new subclasses of property, permitting the state to retain and spend revenue up to the Proposition HH cap, requiring the retained revenue to be used to reimburse certain local governments for lost property tax revenue and to be deposited in the state education fund to backfill the reduction in school district property tax revenue transferring general fund money to the state public school fund and to a cash fund to also be used for the reimbursements, eliminating the cap on the amount of excess state revenues that may be used for the reimbursements for the 2023 property tax year, referring a ballot issue and making an appropriation. Tell me in the comments, do you think that title makes it clear that if you vote for the measure, you'd be giving up your taxpayer refunds forever in exchange for a 0.065% reduction in your home's assessment rate? The ruling is disappointing for those who are just frustrated with our politicians using every trick in the book to raise our taxes and try to take our taxpayer refunds. But the ruling's not surprising. The plaintiffs will appeal the decision, but that appeal probably won't go through before the November election. That means unless Governor Polis calls a special session to give us real property tax relief, as he should, Proposition HH will appear on the November ballot and Coloradans will face the lose-lose situation our politicians have put us in. No matter how Coloradans vote on Proposition HH, you will see the largest property tax increase in Colorado history. But if you want to be able to keep your tax pay a refund. You'll have to vote against Proposition HH and hope that your neighbor does too. That's why at the end of these videos, I always say, if knowledge is power, then ignorance is servitude. If your neighbor knows what this measure will do, they'll vote against it. But if they don't, they may inadvertently vote to raise their own taxes and hand over more of their freedoms to the state.